Hi, welcome back. Yesterday I showed you in the previous video that how I replace uh, this adapter from a mini Pamiya to a XT60. Today I'll show you how I've done that. So I won't redo it, but I'll just walk you through the process so that you'll you'll be able to do it on your own if you have problems with the mini Tamiya power connector. Thank you. Hi, I have here a size 2 torque screw, uh, torque uh, yeah, screwdriver. So let us see if what we need to open first. So you need to open these two to get the handle off and these two to get this side of the handle first and then this uh, front will come off. So let these screws off the way. They are a little tight so be careful. Um, I had some problem with one of the screws so I had to take a different approach to uh, you know put the uh, you know I'll, I'll explain it right. One of the screw was screwed in very tight and I could not open it. So be very very careful. Uh, while putting it back, I'll get another uh, Allen uh, screwdriver so that we can uh, tighten it completely. And probably that will be the last time I'll be tightening this or opening this. So to say, uh, I don't want to risk uh, damaging the radio too much by opening it. So get this over with. Uh, keep it on the side. So you got the two handles and the four screws there. Now you just open this up neatly and nicely. So I get the front uh, head out. So let's keep that here <coughs> nicely. Now you have the four screws here. You need to open that uh, to get that. This is a star uh, with this. I hate the torque screw because uh, the kind of uh, it will go bust if you put a little more pressure. The star ones are the best. So a little tight. So open it up nicely. And then uh, let's uh, put it here. Let me zoom out a little bit so that we are able to see the, uh, okay, that's all I can zoom. So kind of, uh, get this down. yeah, okay. Okay, now the front panel comes off, right? This is the front panel, uh, so let's keep it on the side. So I got a ribbon cable, the... Uh, connector to the head if you ever separate it. Now let's open uh, all the eight, all the six screws here, right? Uh, let's keep this here. I must have closed it very tight yesterday. Yeah. When we are closing it back, I'll use an Allen key to set it tight. So I won't be needing uh, this again. <coughs> so all five out, the last one. Ensure you keep all the screws separate. Uh, these ones are uh, uh, probably uh, four mm. These ones are five mm. So you need to keep this thing separate. And then you lift it up. Uh, the speaker is connected, as you can see. Uh, let me show you. The speaker is connected. Uh, you need to take it out. Uh, when you are facing the front side, the red wire of the speaker uh, comes to your right side. So a little bit nickel, and uh, this one comes off. So we have got the speaker side of things out. Let's keep it on the side. Now you've got this. Uh, now if you see, you've got uh, four uh, star screws here. One two, three, four, and then you've got two uh, mini, I don't know, is this mini SMA? I think it is, one for TX. So yesterday when I opened it up, I put uh, color coded, uh, you know, let me zoom it out a little bit. Yeah, so I color coded with a red tape and a blue tape. So the blue is for RX, the red is for TX. Um, so let's take out these screws first, and then we'll handle this. So one, these screws come with a washer. So please be very, very careful with that. Okay, yeah, it comes with a washer, so let's keep it separately here. Let me, okay, so I've kept the washer separately. Uh, I need a better phone stand. Okay, um, so that's the first one. Uh, then the second one. Yeah, it's a pain to pick it up. Just uh, let's put the washer back in the screw so that. We won't lose it, keep it here, upside down. Okay. 
Okay. The washers are stainless steel, so they won't stick to the magnetic screwdriver. Keep it separate. Yeah, this one's a little tricky. It's on the corner, so be very, very careful. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now, um, so you need to remove three things here. One is the ribbon cable, one is the TX line, one is the RX line. So be very, very careful with the TX line. You just kind of pull it from here. Keep this and just pull it. It'll come off. This one also, uh, this is a little bit tricky. So take a flat uh, screwdriver because it's in that corner behind, a, I think it's a capacitor. Take a short uh, screwdriver like this. Now just very, very carefully, just put some little pressure and it will come off, right? So yeah, when you take it out, mark, uh, ins ensure you mark which is the RX and which is the TX. I've already done the RX is the blue, the TX is the red, right? So it's got a little cable here. You need to, uh, not a cable, a tape. So you need to take it away from that, otherwise it will get stuck. Yeah, there you go. Now the ribbon cable. Uh, so hold it down a little gently and the cable pops off. Now the board is ready to come off. Yeah, there you go. So this is the board. Uh, this is where all your connectors go and a uh, lot of capacitors on this side and I think the main PCB is here. So main chipset rather, not the PCB. So this is the radio. I think this is the radio uh, board. The bottom is the low uh, amplifier and the low pass filter board. So as you can see, let me uh, zoom in a little bit. What I'll show you what I've done. So I had the Minia Tamiya connector here, right? So what I did was I removed the Tamiya connector, uh, took out these two wires through here, uh, soldered two uh, red and black uh, wires to the XT60 connector and just remove this. Yeah, XT60 connector and then uh, soldered uh, the wire coming in from uh, the board to the new wires that I had soldered to the XT60. I didn't want to put a strain on this. Though it's a little bit long, I think it is just okay. Uh, so yesterday what happened was my plan was to take out this back plate so that I can fit this in nicely and then uh, put uh, screws. But I could not take out the back plate because this screw is shut tight. I mean, there is no way I could open it. So what I had to do was put the radio upside down and then file the hole here so that this connector can fit in snugly. It's not loose, it's not very tight either, but very snugly. And then once I soldered and put the wires, I use super glue to fit it in. I don't know if super glue will hold for a very long time. So what I did was I created a patch cable. Uh, let me show you this patch cable. On one end, uh, you have a uh, female, the other end is a male. So this one will go to the battery, the female. So what is put on the uh, radio is a male. So I will use the patch cable always. So this goes into that, right? And I won't take this out, right? So it's always there and this one will go to the battery. So that way your power connector is uh, taken care of. And as you can see, I think they have four finals and a, a five finals is what I see two here, two there and one at the bottom. So yeah, so nothing else you need to do. Yeah, if you have to take out the back one and you are able to get all the screws, this one and uh, the back one out, what you need to do is uh, disconnect this, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, a metal, small metal piece, uh, like a thick wire from the center core of SR239 and uh, remove, let me show, let me add some light here, uh, okay, a little bit diffuse light, yeah, yeah, so as you can see, uh, yeah, you need to take out that uh, nut uh, that is holding the negative uh, portion so that you are able to remove that, right? Uh, from the board. Uh, you just have to unscrew that nut. Before that, you need to remove the spacer, otherwise you will not get access to that. So this is what I have done uh, to change the power connector. Now I let me go ahead and put everything back as it was. We will start by putting the board back. Uh, so we will take the board and uh, push. Uh, let me just turn this like this so that it is not having connector issue. And take this, put this, right. We'll connect those later. Let's uh, just uh, put the screws in first. Okay. Uh, yeah, there you go. So we need the screws. Uh, let me unzoom a little bit. Yeah, we'll take the screws with the 
washer and then very carefully put it here if it falls into that hole there you'll have to open the board up again so very very carefully uh, put that yeah okay don't tighten everything uh, first put all the screws and then tighten one by one right let's uh, do it this side so that we tighten the diagonals first and then Now, here, I need a bigger star screwdriver, a little bigger, yeah, this one. Yeah, there you go. Tighten it. I probably will not be opening this again. So, the last one is pending. Uh, so, take this. Uh, this is okay. Uh, lost the, so, just slide it over there and push this in. Yeah, that's good. So, board is done. Now, let's connect the RX wire. Right, let me zoom it in. Yeah. Uh, Take the RX wire and uh, gently take it from the side so that uh, it doesn't come on that metal thing. And uh, yeah, you should hear a click when it fits in. <coughs> So, too much length. Be very, very careful. Uh, so, Like it's not going actually. So take your time, no hurries. Uh, figure out where to switch. Yeah, you should hear a click. So that should be good. And uh, let's see if we can pull this a little bit towards the inside. If we can get access to a needle plier, I'll be able to pull it in a little bit inside. gently pull it out so that it's not uh, sitting on any of the transformers yeah yeah okay so i just pulled it out a little bit so that it's sitting straight but make space for the speaker bump to go in there uh, otherwise you'll, you won't be able to now what you need to do is uh, put uh, those two wires uh, within this line uh, or rather the tape so that uh, they don't uh, obstruct the speaker when you're trying to put the speaker lid in, right to the lid of the speaker in. Ah, I know that, I know that. Yeah, okay. So all set, now let's uh, put the ribbon in. It's uh, delicate, so don't hurry. You have all the time in the world. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now let's uh, connect and see if the switch is on. We can put in the, you know, uh, front uh, later. So we have connected the RX, we have connected the TX, we have connected the ripple cable. Where is our battery? Yeah, here it is. So connect the battery and uh, let's switch it on. Hey, it's working. So good. Switch it off and then disconnect the battery. 
Let's keep the battery aside. Now take the head off. Let's sit here. Now let's uh, put this in. So this one right, goes like this. Yeah, very nice. These are the small uh, Phillips screw. Uh, so put it back in. Uh, let's take a Phillips driver, the small one. Where is it? Yeah. This is how you replace uh, the power adapter at the back in case you have a problem with uh, mini Tamiya and the uh, radio is all working now. Um, so yeah, um, I've got the CE19 uh, today, uh, which is the data you know connector for, uh, let me keep the radio aside, uh, let me show you this, just give me a second. This is the data connector for uh, Zigu G90, so I've got uh, three cables uh, with RTRS and then uh, the dealer uh, was kind enough to send me this he had missed this out in my uh, delivery in the delivery of uh, uh, g 90 package so he was able to send me this along with the data set so this is CE19 so when I have this ready I'll make another video on how to do FT8 uh, WSPR and the data modes with uh, Zigo 90 this uh, this very popular and this should work um, so he has given one more uh, connector for this one so you can use this you want to connect to uh, xpi 125 which is zigo's uh, power amplifier and uh, you can connect this to a laptop as well to do ft8 and data ops so yeah uh, this is also given with a nice uh, instruction manual instruction manual one page that comes in chinese and english do the chinese i've kept the english one so let me go through all this, uh, get all the wires ready. Uh, he has given very nice uh, three TRS adapters, uh, connectors as well. Let me, um, you know, uh, get this working. Then I'll make another video on how to do FT8 data ops uh, with uh, Zigo uh, G90 along with uh, C19 kit. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, talk to you later.